Would you be free from your burden and sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil have been the holy wind? There's wonderful power in the blood. Sing it, man. There is power, 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 power. power. Wonder what you power in the blood of the Lord. Hello, Bezel Triple Three. I'd like to talk about the blood of Christ. Now, if you say nothing but the blood, we are saved by nothing but the blood, you know, that, that phrase could mean just about anything these days. But I do want to say, to start off with, that the Christian religion is a religion of blood. It is a bloody religion. It is a messy religion. Both the Old and the New Testament are inspired by God. And if we go right back to the beginning, at the fall of Adam and Eve, we see that them trying to clothe themselves, trying to hide their nakedness by using fig leaves was not going to be sufficient. And it was God who took skins and clothed them with the skins of an animal. So we see that the shedding of blood started way back when. And the whole sacrificial system of the Israelites was to point forward to the ultimate sacrifice. It's funny, um, funny, strange, I guess, that in uh, Exodus... Uh, Moses was married to a non-Jew who didn't understand the, the ritual of circumcision and what it meant. And she was forced to, didn't want to circumcise Moses' sons. And she said to Moses, surely you are a bridegroom of blood to me. Not understanding the significance that uh, the shedding of blood is required for the forgiveness of sin. You know, after the flood, uh, God instructed Noah to uh, go ahead and eat animals, but he told them how to do it. He said, don't eat the blood. In verse uh, 4 of chapter 9, he says, um, I gave you everything, but you shall not eat flesh with its life in it. That is, the blood. So we see that blood signifies the life that's within the creature. And God says, do not eat that blood. We are so far removed uh, as modern-day uh, Christians, especially in America. Uh, we go to the store and we buy meat uh, from the, uh, the meat counter or the, uh, the, the refrigerated section, and it's nicely packaged in you know, uh, cellophane uh, with white uh, little packages. And we, if we fail to even recognize what took place at the slaughterhouse and in the butcher's uh, room back in the back to, to make that a piece of meat available for us. You know, the the, the uh, killing of an animal, uh, either for consumption or for sacrifice, uh, as in the Jewish sacrificial system, is very messy business. Now, perhaps you found that shocking. Perhaps you are even offended at that. Um, a little bit too messy, like I said. However, uh, the Christian religion is messy. And Paul says this. He says in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. That is, Christ and his shed blood on behalf of sinners. A stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but we who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, for the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. I mean, consider, we place our faith of being saved from our sins in a Jewish man hanging on a cross in the first century. But if we go back, if we go back and look at um, John, 
listen to what uh, John the Baptist declares of Jesus when he sees him. He says, The next day he saw Jesus coming towards him, and behold, he said, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And if we fast forward all the way to that vision of heaven by uh, by the Apostle John, here's what we uh, here's what he sees and, and what he tells us. He says, "I began to weep because no one was found worthy to open the scroll and to look into it." And then one of the elders said to me, "Weep no more. Behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered so that he can open the scroll." But what does the Apostle John see in this vision? Does he see a lion? No. He says, I saw a lamb standing as though it had been slain. And then he goes on where he sees the 24 elders get up and they sing a new song. Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seal. For you were slain and by your blood you ransomed people for God. You see, we have been created by an infinitely holy God, and we have offended this God infinitely because any sin, no matter how small, is an infinite offense to a God who cannot allow anything but perfection to be in his presence. Now, we are going to have to pay for our sinfulness one way or the other. If we try to take care of our own sinfulness, we are in bad, bad shape because we can't endure the infinite wrath or judgment of God against sin. But what if someone, uh, uh, a substitute, was to take our place and pay this debt of sin so that God could be satisfied? Well, this substitute would have to be two things. One, he would have to be fully human because it was mankind that sinned against God and it is mankind that must suffer the consequence. That's why the old sacrificial uh, system of the Old Testament was temporary and insufficient. It had to be uh, happening over and over and over again, and really it was just a foreshadowing of the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And you see, the other um, requirement of this substitute would be that this substitute would have to be fully God, for only God could withstand the infinite wrath of God against sin. And although the time of Christ suffering on the cross, feeling the wrath of God against sin, the turned face of his Father, as well as all the physical pain, was limited in terms of duration of time, it was of infinite value to the Father because of the value of the sacrifice. You see... I'm going to leave you with, uh, with Romans chapter 5, uh, starting at verse 8. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, still God-haters, still anti-God in, in our thoughts and minds and actions, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we have now been justified by his blood, not blood being some special um, talisman or something, but actually the shed blood causing the loss of life of the Savior, how much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God? You see, Jesus' perfect life and sacrificial death gives us the two things we need. It pays the debt of sin that we owe God and provides us with a righteousness that gives us, uh, in God's sight, the perfection that's required to enter in to the presence of God. If you don't know Christ today, trust in him, not as your coach, not as your, um, your example of how to live a, a moral life, but as your substitute from, to save you from the wrath of God. Hear me well, my people. At midnight, the Lord will go out into the middle of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land shall die. However, Each Hebrew family will be spared if they smear lamb's blood over the lintel of their door. Lift up thy bleeding hand, O Lord, and seal thy cleansing tight. We have no shelter from our sin, but in thy wounded side.